Mom, I don't think I've told you enough that I love you. Thank you so much for inspiring me to be a better woman, a better Christian, a better daughter, and just overall person. Hey, Mom, I just want to say that I love you and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Mom, thanks so much for always being there for me and supporting me. You have a heart of gold and you're a wonderful woman. You've really molded me to be the man that I am today. Thank you for outlining what it truly means to be a hard, hard worker. You not only teach me to be better, but you show me how to be a better person. And in the future, if I can be half the woman that you are, then I think I'll be all right. The one thing I want you to know is that I would not be here in this position without you in my life. Thank you for creating a always welcoming home. You are one of the best cooks that I've ever known. You have always taught me what true love means. Mom, you make the best meatloaf um, in the nation, and so you know that speaks right to me. One thing I haven't told you enough was that you were right. You know, you were right about everything in life. You win, okay, you win. <laughs>
no stranger to Heartland. He's one of our teaching pastors, Steve Arterberg. And if you've ever heard of Women of Faith, anyone not ever heard of Women of Faith? Come on. Women of Faith have been attended by five million people over all these years. And 20 years ago, actually, Steve founded Women of Faith. And now he, he's in the middle of a farewell tour with, uh, uh, with all the Women of Faith speakers at all these arenas around the nation. And Steve's been able to break free and get back with us for Mother's Day. So I'm really glad that he's here with us today. If you don't know him, he hosts the number one syndicated Christian counseling talk show called New Life Live. And that's heard by millions on the radio, XM, um, internet TV. There's a new TV channel called tv.newlife.com. I think there's like 800 programs that are online that you can download. And you can read more about his best-selling books. That's all in the bulletin. But I will mention to you that he's the editor of the Life Recovery Bible, which for the record is the number one uh, study Bible in the world right now. And, and he's, he's done a great job. We're, we're so glad that he's here. He's a loving husband to his amazing wife, Miss. They all live here right in Fishers with their kids, and they're a part of our church. He's my friend. He's one of the funniest people I know. Get ready to laugh and be inspired. Open up your heart and put your hands together and give a huge welcome to Steve Arterburn. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to say um, hello to our uh, folks over there at the HSE campus, and uh, that, of course, stands for Holy uh, Sepulcher Eternal, and um, we're, we're glad that you're there and love you to death. Now, I, I uh, heard what Darren had to say about th three days ago, and I was blown away by the generosity of his heart and the staff and, and of course, all the people here. Because when I grew up, Mother's Day, you, you got a carnation when you walked out the door, and it was most likely uh, already starting to wilt. So to... To do this for uh, single moms, I think it's what God would want us to be doing, and it just makes me proud to be part of this church. Now, Darren and Larie are celebrating the graduation of Nick. I want to tell you, um, I, I know that when they took Nick uh, up to Wheaton, Nick brought his dad over to his computer and opened it up and said, Dad, I have a, a, a software package that everything that I look at on my, on my uh, computer, every site I go to on the internet, you will see what I've been to because I don't want to move too far from how you've raised me. I just think that is uh, so uh, characteristic of Laurie and Darren. And, um, you know, I wrote a book called Toxic Faith. If it wasn't, if they weren't the real thing, I'd be telling you, and it'd be my last time to speak here. And, uh, <laughs> In fact, I haven't spoken here uh, for about six months due to some things that I said last time. But anyway, um, Darren mentioned tv.newlife.com. It's a subscription television service, and you, you plug in whatever you want to hear about, and we've got, probably got a program on it. And I worked out, the uh, day before yesterday, a code that if you went there to tv.newlife.com and you put in this code HC50, Heartland Church 50, HC50, uh, you would be able to subscribe for half price, and it's really cheap. Uh, it's less uh, than, than what you would pay uh, for one counseling session, and you get for the whole year. But today, this morning, I want to talk to you about some truth that will set you free. I did an extensive study of Scripture, and I discovered that not one place in Scripture is there a calling for a mother to be a doormat, a floor mat, she may have to wear a hazmat uh, suit, but there's no place where a mat is related to a mother. In fact, this morning I want to talk to you about the calling of a strong mother. Now, when you go to Proverbs 31, you can see that um, there's the word strong right there in the 17th verse. She is energetic and she is strong. Uh, she is, you know, maybe after three kids and four sports on a Saturday. She may have spurts of energy, but the word strong is there. And, that, and this uh, Proverbs 31 woman is a mother. He's describing a mother. In 31.25, it says she is clothed in strength and dignity. So whether it's sweatpants or yoga pants, whatever uh, food byproduct that's on her, there is dignity, there is strength. And then here it says, so my brothers and sisters, be strong 
And then they put this word immovable, which I think is great encouragement for every mother not to pack up and move away uh, in the midst of stress. Be immovable because we need you. And this morning, I'm going to give you some lessons that I've learned from some very powerful, strong women in my life. I had these amazing grandmothers. Uh, I had uh, all these women of faith. My wife, my mother, one of the greatest uh, women ever. And she's 88 and just uh, amazing in her wisdom and strength and a cancer survivor. Uh, so I want to share with you some things that I've learned from strong women in my life. And, and the first message is this that a strong mother does not wait for God to do what God is waiting for her to do. Now, waiting upon the Lord is actually a very biblical concept, but if you use that as an excuse not to do what you know to do or to stop doing what you know you shouldn't be doing, then that's not waiting on the Lord. That's just wishing, wishing that God would change the situation or change the person that you're with, and uh, wishing doesn't get you anywhere. Strong, strong mothers, they make bold moves. They don't just wish. And, uh, you know, many times a woman will, uh, rather than make a bold move that she knows to do, she will shut down a gift that she has that us men don't have. Uh, Einstein, as an owl, said this. He said, Intuition is the gift, and the rational mind should be the servant of it. And so here's this rational, brilliant man saying, intuition is the gift. That should be the leading factor. And every mother, a strong mother, has a tummy that knows what she needs to be doing. And you can come up with all these excuses, but you know inside that you shouldn't be enabling evil in your home. You shouldn't be keeping the peace at all costs because God doesn't honor peacekeepers. He honors peacemakers. And so that mother has this strong intuition, this tummy. And men, we don't speak tummy. We, we speak six-pack. And uh, we either want a six-pack or uh, we want to drink a six-pack, one or the other, and that's, that's just how we do. We don't have that gift. And if you're with a man who tries to silence the gift, that man, of course, is no gift. Because you really do, inside, know what to do. Proverbs 10.10 10 talks about not being a person who succumbs to this false weakness. Uh, it says that when you wink at wrong, you cause trouble. But a strong or an open rebuke will bring lasting peace. In other words, rather than enable, wink it away, act like it's not there, we are called to make the bold move because that's what will bring about a lasting peace rather than just keeping the peace and showing children uh, what we uh, really should never, ever put up with. Now, that leads me to the second lesson that I've learned, and that is that a strong mother has healthy and healing connections with other women. And if you don't have those connections, uh, you're going to make some very destructive decisions. Uh, at Women of Faith, if you go to a Women of Faith conference the past 20 years, all the women sit up on the stage while the other person's speaking. It's called the porch. And one of the things that I believe is so true is that every woman needs to have a porch of healthy, healing connections with other women. And on our radio program, uh, we're like a broken record because a woman will call in all these disasters and the question is, where are the women in your life? Because those women will keep you from some very, very destructive and disastrous situation. And I'm not talking about a superficial connection because the stereotype of a woman is very connected to other women. But if you're not opening up your life, as it says, well, look at James 5, 16. It says, confess your sins one to another, and then you pray for each other that you might be healed. It might be the most specific verse in Scripture on healing. And so if you're not opening up to another woman, mother to mother, woman to woman, then you're missing out on the value of that connection. Now, let me talk to you single moms. If you're a single mom... Uh, and you're in love, 
you know that you're mentally ill. That is the state. Uh, that's what romance does. It makes you psychotic. And in that state of psychosis, you will, look o you will overlook some very, very important things. And it's important that you have supportive, healthy, healing women around you to point out some things that you might miss. Let's say you had a date with this fabulous man here. And you fell in love, and you became mentally ill. All right. You might introduce this gentleman to your healing community, point out how handsome he looks in flannel, and, um, and what a fabulous, fabulous addition to his wardrobe the blue knit cap is. And one of your friends might say, look, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I, I just got to bring this up that it looks like he might be carrying an axe, and he could be an axe murderer. And you might say, oh, I thought that was his razor. No, he has a beard. He doesn't shave. That's, that's an ax. You see, if you don't have someone around you to break through the psychosis of romance, then you end up in a very, very tough place. And you just think it's going to get better. All he needs is a little love, and he won't have that need to chop people's heads off. That's what you think, but it just never works that way, does it? And some of you are married to him. I mean, he doesn't look exactly like that, but you think, oh, I'm married to an axe murderer. And uh, the reason was you weren't connected to those healthy women that you need. The third lesson, and this is something, you know, this is really, the other stuff, this is good. I want you to listen to this part, then go back and get the rest that you deserve. But um, a strong mother will nurture the little boy, but she will also call out the man. Now, so does a strong wife, because all of us men have a little boy in there that needs nurturing. But we also, we also have a man that needs to be called out. Now, when Jesus was on this earth, he said, you know, it wasn't my time when his mother called him out to minister. She said, turn this water into wine. He said, hey, come on. It's not my time. And then she just said, hey, do what he says. She just assumed that he would follow her direction, and he did. Mothers need to call out the man. Now, a couple of years ago, I've talked about this before. A couple of years ago, I did an age-inappropriate stunt on a skateboard. And I ended up, uh, I shredded my ACL, broke my leg, and tore my meniscus and shattered my ego. And so I ended up in bed, and I needed nurturing. And so my wife, great, great nurturing. About two weeks into it, I asked her to do something for me, and she said, no, we're done. And <laughs> that's what I needed to hear, because um, she needed to call out the man since she had nurtured the little boy. A woman doing anything for a young man or an older man that he can do or needs to do is not helping. He is not, uh, she is not calling out that man. And one of the things that we know is that God's truth calls out the man. Now, we have a little eight-year-old boy, Solomon. Now, here's Solomon. Solomon is actually reading the Proverbs written by his great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather, Solomon. And he, Solomon is a really bright little boy. My wife has an IQ of, I don't know what it is, Einstein would be happy with her IQ. And Solomon reads about 200 pages a day. And it just, it blows me away. Um, and, and he has this truth in him that has informed him that he needs to depend, be dependent on God and not just a mother. He needs to respond to God's truth not just respond or wait for his mother to do for him what he can do for himself. In fact, two days ago, uh, he was uh, supposed to take the field hockey nets over to his friend's house who had brought him over, and he forgot to do it. And his little friend got really angry and didn't want to play. So Solomon, on his own, just tells us, I'm writing him a note, and it says, please forgive me for not bringing back the nets. And if there's anything I can do to make up for it, I will do it. So he puts it in an envelope. And we didn't tell him to do that. He just did this. 
runs over to their house, leaves it on the front doorstep, rings the doorbell, and runs home. <laughs> so we thought that was kind of unique. And um, actually, that kind of avoidant behavior may have come from his father. But um, <laughs> so 10 minutes later, we hear our doorbell, doorbell ring, and we, <laughs> through the window, see that little boy running back over to his house. <laughs> so Solomon goes to the door, opens it up, and it says, want to play? That was our little boy's solution because his mom had given him the truth that calls out the man, even from the little boy. Now, if you look at John 8, 31, 32, it says this. If you hold to my teachings, so it's not like you can't memorize this and make it happen. You've got to hold to the teaching. You've got to live this out. If you hold to my teachings, you are truly my disciple. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Don't expect God's truth to set you free if you're not going to live it. But when you learn it and live it, it literally sets you free. That's why I get so excited about uh, the Bible projects that I've been involved with. This uh, Every Man's Bible is nominated for Bible of the Year this year. And if you go on Amazon, you'll see these men talking about and these women, a man reading the Bible. He never really had much interest in it because that's what calls him out along with the female in his life. Now, let me tell you what happens too often. Rather than call out the man, a woman can cut down the man. If you use the three deadly C's of any marriage, and marriage is grand. Divorce is about 100 grand, but, uh, <laughs> and you don't want to go there. But marriage gets very ungrand when a man is criticized, when he is controlled, when he is compared to other men. What you do is you cut down the man and you create a little boy. And the dynamic that's set up there has caused so many divorces because now we've got the angry mother and a rebellious little kid. And that dynamic destroys every form of intimacy that you can possibly think of. Because angry mothers are not attracted to rebellious children, if you understand what I'm saying. And most men who have been put in that rebellious child mode are not attracted to an angry mother image. So that's why you don't cut down the man with criticism or comparison or control. You call out the man to do what he needs to do. And God's Word helps you in that process. All right. The fourth lesson is that a strong mother is in search for what lies beneath. She's in search for what lies beneath those cute, darling little faces. What's under there that makes them who they are uniquely? And she helps them search for what is not so desirable. And she helps them deal with that. And she searches beneath her own skin to see what it is that has prevented her from living the life that God has called her to live. Now, when Oprah had her daily talk show, uh, I was on a few times. And the last time I was on, I was there with a book on depression. And one of the greatest honors of my life was to end up in the National Enquirer the next week with Oprah. Now, you have to get past Bert and his lover. I don't know what that was about. I don't know if it was an alien or what. But anyway, you come down here, and it said that guest reveals Oprah's hidden heartache. And uh, it's actually quoting what happened. And essentially what happened was that we were talking, and she just kind of saw that beneath the weight problem was depression. And beneath the depression was a history of horrific childhood sexual abuse. And so she was essentially beginning that search for what was underneath the weight. A lot of people never do that. I thought, well, now that, I'm, that this is in the National Enquirer, perhaps the reader would start to search for why in the world do I have to read the National Enquirer? Because that's a sickness that I, I know no cure for. And some of you may be subscribers to National Enquirer. You need help immediately. You should call <laughs> our 800 number. Um, but it's so easy to go through life and just look at the surface of your own life and not, not go deeper. 
And it's easy to make judgments about other people and draw conclusions about other people based on what you see on the surface versus what's really there. It's so easy to judge people and criticize people unless you love people. And when you love people, very hard to move over into that judgment, criticism type mode. Now, I always wanted to date a cheerleader, and I eventually, I, now I'm married to one, and one day we said, I'll put on my football jacket, you put on your cheerleading jacket, take this picture. Now, my wife is very beautiful, and she has blonde hair, actually. Uh, she looks about 20 years younger than she is. People can't believe she's got a 17-year-old. But she has uh, more gray hair than I do, and I, I tell her she would really do us a service if she would uh, let it go. But anyway, uh, you see this, and you think, well, you know, she just ha must have this charmed life and all that. But what you don't see under the jacket is a young woman that went to bed hungry many nights. They had nothing. Uh, they, there, was, um, there was no car. They didn't have a car. Uh, they had a bicycle. And uh, she went to bed hungry. She never had a dress until she was 16. And she got the cheerleading jacket the second year she was a cheerleader because they couldn't afford it. Um, the first year, she was the only one on the squad that didn't have a cheerleading jacket. But all of those horrific uh, issues that led to this shame of not, you know, being what everybody else was, having what they had, I think led to her uh, becoming the woman that she is today. It's such a, a deeper, richer story than just to assume that somebody who's attractive has got it all together. Now, when you see my football jacket, you think, well, he looks like he played football. I did play football, and I hated every minute of it. But I was raised in Texas, and if you didn't play football, you were weird. So I played football, and it was a connection that I had with my dad. But I played at a time when football helmets were designed to prevent skull fracture, not brain injury. And this yet last year, uh, I was diagnosed with traumatic brain injury from the six years that I played football in Texas. And... Uh, one of my friends, when he heard that I had been suffering from traumatic brain injury for most of my life, he said, it, it seems to make sense now. But uh, I, <laughs> I didn't think that was coming. But, beyond, but beneath the jacket was, was a, a guy that wasted hours practicing a sport. He didn't, I like to watch it. I just didn't like to be part of it. And I've literally suffered and struggled with this this injury, and I didn't know I even had it till this past year. And my point is that it's easy to see things, look at the surface, make conclusions about people. When you love them, you go deeper. And you know, the, the, the first place to start to understand other people is you start with yourself. And you know, some very spiritual soul searching is quite biblical. In fact, uh, Lamentations 3.20 says, let us examine our ways. Let us test and examine our ways. And we need to do that. And we need to not be ashamed that we're going to take the time to do that because there are mysteries that can be uncovered when a woman, a strong mother, starts to search for things that she does not know or why they're there. Now, lesson number five is this, that a strong mother finds her strong voice and begins to live her strong life. Uh, my wife, one of the greatest compliments she's ever paid me, um, there was another one, one a couple of years ago, but this one was that, thank you for helping me find my strong voice to live a strong life. Because when she graduated from high school, even college, there wasn't much of a voice there based on her feelings of shame and inferiority. But now, she's quite a complex person, and this nice, feminine, beautiful woman in the summer, see, here's what she did. Uh, she goes and herds cattle at a working ranch out in Colorado. And uh, if you look at the horse, this horse, I mean, he is at full attention under her leadership. I relate to this horse. I, I know uh, this feeling. And uh, it's, it's a feeling of strength. And, and she shoots a gun. I mean, she's amazing with a rifle. And... Um, when we go to bed at night, I make sure she's not packing. And we, um, I was, I was uh, giving a talk and showed these pictures in Billings, Montana, three weeks ago. 
And, uh, oh my gosh, they, they wanted her autograph. It was just because she could shoot a gun. But I'm telling you that that kind of strength is fueled by a concealed weapon of the power of the Holy Spirit and a strong voice. And if you know my daughter, Amelia turned six on Friday. Amelia, here she is. Now, one of the worst mistakes we've ever made in our lives is we enrolled her in Taekwondo. Uh, she has an, uh, an inner truck driver already. And uh, why we thought it'd be a good idea to help her become a... Now, she, she's got her yellow belt. Here she is. She's, she's one of the strongest little girls I've ever seen in my life. And it was like putting rocket fuel into a race car. Uh, and and no, no, no man is safe when she grows up because she will get a black belt in Taekwondo. And uh, I'm, I love this little girl and her strength. I just never dreamed it. But it's from a mother who found her strong voice. Now, maybe you didn't have a mother do that for you. And maybe that's a part of the problem. And so Mother's Day doesn't become such a, a day of being thankful for the mother you have, but maybe it's a call to forgive your mother and then honor her by becoming something that she could never, ever help you become because she didn't have it in her either. What a great thing when we stop making excuses from our past, when we stop waiting for God to do what God wants us to do, and we start building that strong life that God has called every mother to. On our radio program last week, we had a woman who called about her daughter who was being bullied not only by a, a young man at school, but by a male teacher. And she was so angry that her husband was not involved in helping the daughter deal with that bullying. Well, as we talked to this mother, we discovered the husband, alcoholic, been enabled by this mother, who had convinced her that he should be able to live the life he wanted to lead no matter what, very disengaged and very disconnected from the family. And we just kind of pointed out to her that perhaps her daughter watching her mother be bullied by the dad is just following in her footsteps, allowing herself to be bullied by somebody else. Our kids are watching, and they're making decisions about things that will affect the rest of their lives. And there's nothing more powerful than a young woman to see a strong mother make amazing, amazing decisions. Uh, choices and decisions. So, that leads me to Proverbs 31, 28, where it says, um, her children stand and bless her, her husband praises her. Now, my wife hates me preaching on Mother's Day because she knows I'm going to talk about her. She is the best, the most competent mother I've ever been around. And so, I'm not bragging on my wife. I am following God's will for my life to praise her. And I know that not Every mother is worthy of praise. If that's you, you can walk out of here and decide you're going to make up for lost time. Find that strong voice and begin to live that strong life. Which leads me to the fifth, uh, sixth lesson, which is that a strong mother never gives up on God. And she knows that God has not given up on her. Some of you walked in here from some very, very dark places. And I've been in those dark places. And they're horrible. And you think God's forgotten you. And you think God loves everybody but you. And you think you don't, you don't really have a relationship with God because of the pain or the shame or the suffering. I'm telling you, you don't give up on God because just around the corner and over the hill are blessings that you simply cannot imagine that are going to happen. But for them to happen, you have to go back to lesson number one and stop waiting for God to do what God is waiting for you to do. You pick up wherever you are. You ask God to give you the courage to add whatever resource you need to your life, whether it's 
listening to the tummy, connecting with the friends, the work to find the strong voice. You do it, and you will be astounded by what God will do just when you thought <laughs> it was time to give up. Now, I want to leave you with a scripture passage that really calls you to the place of strength where God wants you. It's found in Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. And every time you see this call and provision for strength and power, I would love it if you moms would circle it. But it says this, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resource, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down to God's love and keep you strong. God's love will keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide and how long, how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is just too great to understand fully. And then, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And uh, one of my other uh, favorite translations of this that we might ask or even imagine. God is going to do things for you that you cannot even think or imagine possible if you will just allow him to do the work, which requires some bold moves from a strong mother. And the impact goes on for generation after generation. So I am praying as a mother, that you will leave here wanting to live in his power, wanting to live in his love. And you men, I am praying that you will have heard something that will convict your heart to say, if I am not helping the woman in my life, whether it's my daughter or my mother or my wife or my sister, if I'm not helping them find the strong voice, and heaven forbid, if I am helping silence that strong voice and preventing that strong life. I'm praying that you would be convicted that on this day you're going to become one of those men that helps a woman find what God wants her to have. Because women are a powerful force in this world. So strong that some men have done everything they can to silence the strong voice. And I pray that you will commit you're not going to be one of those guys. Today's a great day to honor mothers, maybe forgive and accept a mother that wasn't so honorable. I don't know where you are, but I know this. God loves you, wants something better for you. His grace is sufficient for anything that you've ever experienced. And this church is a great place for you to find some healthy, healing connections of other mothers. Let me pray as we go. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for that example of Mary calling out her son Jesus to begin the ministry. He didn't know it was even time. And, Lord, thank you for the influence and the impact of strong moms. And I pray that on this day, no matter what, every mother here would experience your presence and live out the courage that only you can provide through your love and power and strength. In your name I pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you.